Today is the day where the Hilux officially becomes a Rome overlanding vehicle. So we are done and dusted here at Branding Zone. And to be honest, I'm really happy with how it looks. We also got a couple little individual transfer stickers of the actual Rome Overlanding logo. So if you're ever out and about and you ever see the Rome vehicle or you, know, you meet me in person, I'll always have some of these available with me. So if you want, ask one and I'll be happy to give you one. But anyways, let's head over now and we can go and start working on installing the new brakes. Welcome to another episode of Rome Overlanding. My name is Adrian Abrahams, and last week we head over to Fox South Africa to upgrade the suspension on the Hilux. Now we get to visit the Power Bake factory and actually end up installing a big brake kit on the Hilux. The life of a Power Brake kit generally begins as an aerospace aluminium billet, which gets meticulously crafted by state-of-the-art multi-axis CNC machines, working within micron tolerances to create only the highest quality components. And all of this adds up to them being one of the top brake manufacturers in the world. And that all started here in South Africa 17 years ago. Now, they are fitted on over a quarter of the vehicles in the Dakar Rally and have placed in the top three for seven seasons and even had a victory last year. All of that came out of this facility, created by the very same machines that make their big brake kits. Their discs are manufactured out of a proprietary high carbon cast iron alloy that is incredibly durable and stable under high thermal loads and come in both their affordable standard diameter bolt-on kits or their high performance big brake kits. However, they both share many of the same qualities. The components are hand assembled to ensure the quality of each individual kit which are hard anodized with carefully selected colors to ensure maximum UV and temperature resistance to prevent color fading over time. But I must say it's been really incredible to see the attention to detail that Powerbrake have throughout the manufacturing process and it makes me proud to know that this level of craft exists in South Africa. But I don't think this is the limit for them because their development continues daily creating systems for new vehicles and pushing the limits of their engineering even further to constantly keep bringing their incredible quality to the world podiums and your vehicle alike. And getting to tour their facility has been an absolute privilege. And now I have a chance to test it all for myself. I cannot wait to get back to the workshop and install my big brake kit on the Hilux. Today we're going to be installing the big brake kit from Power Brake on the Hilux. So let's have a, a little look at what's hiding inside the box here. Some very beautifully packaged things here. What is in box number one? Oh. Beauty Incarnate itself, 
these are the new calipers going on. Let's see, let's get this thing open as soon as possible. Look at this baby. That is beautiful. So when we were at the power brake factory, we saw how these actually get machined out of solid blocks of aluminum. And it's super impressive to see it once it's been anodized, the brake pads are in, everything. I can't believe this is actually going on the vehicle. It doesn't look like it's gonna fit. It looks way too big. Okay, next up, a much lighter box. Got a little bit of uh, brake fluid here. We've got the braided brake hose, the bracket for mounting the caliper, and just some little bits and bobs to help us out during the installation. Then we got uh, this monster. <laughs> Look at the size of this thing. Uh, this is gonna be the new brake discs going on. This thing is insane. Oh gosh, so we're also gonna be installing uh, the standard diameter brake kit on Roof's Bucky. So we're gonna get to see a difference between the big brake kit and the standard diameter kit. I'm keen to see just how different it is. And we're gonna have a look and see, uh, I mean, just look at this on there. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of ridiculous, but I love it. Anyways. Let's, uh, let's open Rolf's one and then we can get the whole installation started. Now, Rolf's standard diameter kit is certainly a lot less complicated than the big brake kit and only really has two components, an axle matched set of discs and the brake pads, which have been specially selected for 4x4 use. Now, once we have the two kits unboxed, you're really going to get to see the difference between the standard diameter and the big brake kit. Both have the spiral slots for removing debris and water, but the big brake kit has large curved cooling vanes for improved cooling and is quite a bit larger. I think it'll be interesting to see the difference in performance over the long run. This is something that if you are technically savvy, you could do this upgrade on your own as long as you're confident. I would say if you're not so technically savvy, still seek you know, professional assistance with something like this. There are plenty of places where they can help you with your power brake upgrades. Today, I'm here at Rolf's little workshop and we've got Cornell busy helping me. He is the mechanic here. He's gonna be doing all the stuff and then I'll just kind of be talking you guys through the process. So we ended up pulling off the splash guard completely. Well, by pulling, I mean cutting. Um, but you know, it's, it's that, or it's removing all the wheel bearings and going through that whole schlep of having to do that. And right now, we don't really need to do that. It's a bit overkill. Um, plus the fact that, you know, that splash plate is actually creating a bit of a tiny space in here anyway. So it just makes sense. You're gonna have to cut it anyway. Might as well. We're just busy polishing the hubs at the moment. It's critical that the surface is spotless because when you put the disc on, it needs to be able to mount flush and perfectly. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is after a couple thousand kilometers, you're gonna start experiencing something called brake judder. And it's just from that vibration over time, from having that little bit of flex between the disc and the hub, it's gonna cause those problems. So obviously by getting in there, cleaning it up nicely, having it shiny, you know that the surface is perfect for once we put everything together. Now we are pretty much ready to go and to start finishing up the installation. We can put the new disc on, we can put the new caliper on, and then we can start bleeding and getting on with the whole process. Now for the moment of truth, getting to see this epic kit on the vehicle. Now the installation process isn't necessarily complicated because there are detailed instructions. However, there are certain things that just must be done absolutely correctly. And one of those is making sure the caliper bracket is correctly torqued to the vehicle and that the caliper itself is perfectly torqued to the bracket. But from this point, it's just a matter of connecting the stainless braided brake line and then carefully reattaching all of the brake lines and ABS brackets. So we've gone ahead, everything's installed now. We've run the brake, the new brake line. So it's actually a stainless braided brake line. 
So that's actually going to change your brake pedal response when you're driving. It's going to, because think about it, it's not rubber anymore. So when you push the rubber, the rubber would expand. It's a lot tighter. So you're going to get a bit more of a firm brake pedal. All that's left to do now is bleed the brakes. And there's a bit of a sequence to do. Once that's done, we take it out on some of the corrugated roads around here and just kind of let everything jiggle around a little bit. We pull it back in, we bleed it one more time. Now, from that point, the bedding process begins. So now that is about 300 kilometers of just normal driving. You don't want to be harsh on the brakes. The pad needs to kind of embed itself properly on the disc and they need to just kind of, I think there's a bit of a transfer of material and things like that that needs to happen in that process. Once those 300 Ks are done, then you do about six hard stops in a row where you really just kind of heat up and cool, heat up and cool, heat up and cool the brake discs. And from that point onwards, your brakes are bed in, you can drive just normally from that point. So we've had a very fun time uh, bleeding the whole system. It's quite a tricky thing sometimes and it's just something you've just got to just try and keep doing and keep doing and keep doing and keep doing. But we've gotten it to a point where we're comfortable with it. We're going to pull it out now. We're just going to do a little bit of driving up and down just to try and shake some of the bubbles out of the system, bleed it one more time and we should be good to go to get out of here for today. We've been here a little bit longer than anticipated so we'll have to catch up and install roof setup tomorrow. So it's definitely feeling a lot better. So all we're going to do is we're going to do one final bleed. We've managed to get some of the paint off of the brakes now and we're pretty much ready to rock and roll. We've had a super long day here at the workshop. Everyone's exhausted. It is uh, 9.30. <laughs> it doesn't normally take this long to install the kit and to bleed the whole system and all that stuff. But you know, we want to do it nicely. We took it slowly. We're obviously filming and all of that stuff. But you know what? I'm going to head out now. We're going to come back tomorrow. We're going to install Rolf's standard diameter power brake kit. And it's going to be very interesting to compare the two and see what each of them are all about. But anyways, guys, cheers. So we've had a bit of dramatic weather recently, um, but we are ready to go for round two. Rolf's Bucky is inside the workshop. We're going to get to work on it. He's got a Hilux 2.8 legend 50 uh, for those of you guys who are outside of south africa that's our like kind of limited edition special edition hilux we're going to be installing the standard diameter brake kit on his vehicle from power brake and uh, we're going to really be able to have a good look between the big brake kit and his kit and see some of the differences between the two and you know if you're looking for an upgrade for your own brake setup you'll be able to decide which one is going to suit you best the wall thickness of the rotor is much thicker on the power brake one than the wall thickness of the standard rotor. So therefore it can absorb more energy and heat. So the difference in the installation process is you don't have to change the brake caliper. Therefore you don't have to disconnect the brake lines. Therefore there's no bleeding. So it's simple. Take the caliper off its mounting, keep the brake lines connected, pop the disc off, polish the wheel hub, put the new disc on, Put the caliper back, pop the new brake pads in, and that's it. So this caliper as per Toyota specifications needs to be torqued to 197 newton meters. It's been surprisingly easy to install the standard diameter kit, but I mean, it makes sense. It's a direct bolt-on kit. You don't have to worry about modifying or chopping anything. It just goes straight on. And I mean, it's already going to be a big improvement over the standard Hilux brakes. The standard Hilux brakes have not changed for years and they are generally known for not being the best out there. They're specced more for longevity and reliability and things like that, but not necessarily for performance. So when you upgrade to something like a power brake kit, you're going to get improved performance, you're going to get improved cooling, you're going to get all sorts of improvements like, but I would rather have better braking when I need it, you know. Also, Rolf's Bucky is slowly going to start getting more and more accessories on it and having the increased weight is going to put increased strain on the brakes. And it's just one of those things, the same like what I've done with my vehicle. Obviously, the big brake kit is in a bit of a different league. The big brake kit pulls its inspiration from 
Dakar racing. It's a beautiful specimen of engineering for sure. But is it a little bit overkill for what I'm doing? Probably, because I'm not going super fast. But for me, the way I look at it, having an automatic vehicle, my brakes have to work extra over a manual. So if I'm doing hard 4 by 4 and we've got steep declines and things like that, the chance of me experiencing brake fade is very slim because of the bigger brakes, because of the over-engineering there, because of the improved cooling. And you can see the difference between the two different brake discs from the standard diameter to the big brake kit. It's significantly bigger. The materials are thicker, the spacing for air is bigger, the surface area, we've got six pistons in there versus the four on the standard diameter for the brake pads. So it can grip harder. And you'll see on both of these brake discs though, is they've got these nice little grooves in the actual disc, in the contact area. And what that's gonna do is gonna help flick off dust and dirt and any sort of debris that gets onto the disc. So it is gonna give you improved braking performance even when driving through muddy areas, water, you know, dust, sandy things, just everything like that. So off-road, these kits are, that's what they're designed for. You'd think that it's a performance setup, it's power brake, you know, they, they, they do a lot of racing and a lot of track stuff, but actually this new line of theirs is, is really kind of focused towards off-road vehicles. And they're really specializing in that. And I think that history and that lineage with Dakar really shows that they know what they're doing when it comes to performance and reliability at the same time. So look, I'm keen, we've got to do our bedding in process. It takes a bit of time. So we'll have to meet back with you guys. We'll see you guys again soon. So that's that for now. I've done the bedding in process and I've completed my six emergency stops. And I really wish I could show you the vehicle right now. But so much has happened in this past week during the bedding process that you're just gonna have to stay subscribed and stay tuned for the next episode where you get to see a little bit more of what's been cooking with this vehicle. But guys, this has been very fun, especially, you know, this is our second part of the performance upgrades to the Hilux. And it's all been in preparation for what's to come next. A little bit further down the line, we will be doing some power upgrades to the vehicle and increasing the performance of the vehicle. So in combination with having a heavy vehicle, wanting to get a bit more power out of the vehicle, having stopping power just really makes sense at the end of the day. But thank you so much for tuning into this episode and I really hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit more about the power brake setup and learning about what goes into making a set of power brakes. And yeah, I must be honest, so far, it's pretty damn impressive. And I can't wait to really, you know, test them out over a longer period of time and compare them with roofs. So I think with all of these performance videos, you are definitely gonna see a review at a much later stage once we've got more experience with the setup. Um, the same can be said for the suspension and the same can be said for the power upgrades coming up. So stay tuned and all will be revealed soon. Anyways, guys, thank you so much, and I'll catch you next week. Cheers. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Rome Over Landing. I just wanted to take a moment to thank my awesome patrons for their support, as well as let you know if you want to join in on our weekly live streams and updates, you should head over to Patreon and become a member. On the next episode of Rome Over Landing, we head over to National Luna and finalize the dual battery setup. And I'd love to know which power brake kit you would like to put on your vehicle in the comments below. I also want to give a massive shout out to all my incredible product partners. Without you guys, none of this would be possible. Anyways, I'll see you next week. Cheers.